Let's bring in someone who has some say on the question of impeachment, member of the House Judiciary Committee, Democratic Congressman David Cicilline of Rhode Island. Congressman, it's good to see you. You said yesterday, quote, if Don McGahn does not testify, it is time to open an impeachment inquiry. We are really left with no other choice. Don McGahn is not going to show up before your committee to testify today, his lawyers have said. Will you open an impeachment inquiry? Well, uh, again, my view is that we should. Uh, that's a decision that we'll make collectively as a caucus. But there's real unity in the Democratic caucus on two issues. One is that we have to deliver on the promises we made to the American people in our For the People agenda to drive down health care costs, drive down the cost of prescription drugs, raise family incomes by rebuilding America and taking on the corruption in Washington and the self-dealing and getting the government to work for the people again. We're delivering on those. We passed prescription drugs. Uh, legislation to reduce the cost of drugs. Right. We've passed legislation to strengthen the Affordable Care Act. We're working on infrastructure. So we're getting that done. There's also unanimity in the caucus to be sure that we hold this president accountable, that no one is above the law and that we have to get to this, uh, to the truth. And so I, I think that there comes a point when the White House uh, their efforts to impede our investigation, to prevent us from hearing from witnesses and generating uh, documents makes it impossible for us to do our work. And I think that uh, an impeachment inquiry uh, is appropriate at that juncture. That's my view. And that's not the view of the caucus. It's certainly not the view of the full leadership team. But there is absolute consensus that we need to continue with our oversight, continue to compel the attendance of witnesses and the production of documents to hold this president accountable. And we'll continue to do that. By blocking Don McGahn from testing testifying in front of you today, the White House has crossed that line that you laid out yesterday for an impeachment inquiry. Will there be a meeting today? Will there be discussion? And where do people sit within the Judiciary Committee on the question of impeachment? In other words, do you have to convince a lot of people or are most of you there already? Well, no, I mean, I think, again, an impeachment inquiry is really just the formal opening of that question by, by the committee. In, in the Nixon impeachment, the impeachment inquiry began, and the articles of impeachment were not voted out by the Judiciary Committee for about seven months. So this is just the beginning of the process. I think whatever the vehicle is, there is absolute unanimous uh, uh, belief in the, in the Judiciary Committee that we need to continue to compel witnesses, continue to seek the production of documents, litigate it in court, to follow the facts where they take us. Uh, and I think at some point we may well end up in uh, consideration of articles of impeachment if, if the evidence uh, supports it. But I think we have to recognize this is the president who, according to the Mueller report, attempted to obstruct justice on 10 separate occasions, tried to get members of his staff to lie, tried to uh, interfere with, with, with testimony of witnesses. So these are serious, serious, uh, serious evidence of misconduct. And when you add to that this pattern of the president and the White House to obstruct and impede and prevent us from getting the facts and hearing from witnesses, uh, that rises to the level, in my view, of triggering the formal opening of impeachment inquiry. Again, that's my own view, yeah. but I think that the caucus is committed to be sure that we hold this president accountable and that no one in this country, including the president of the United States, is above the law. So, Congressman, for the benefit of our viewers, what would an impeachment inquiry allow you to do in terms of access to evidence and witnesses that you don't have access to now? Well, I don't know that it would, it would allow us to have access that we don't have now. I think it would signal to all of the parties that this is a serious inquiry by the committee uh, with, the, with the potential or the consideration of impeachment as a final action. So it just really sort of raises the level of seriousness of it. We would have the same ability to issue subpoenas, issue subpoenas for documents and individuals. Uh, our oversight responsibilities, I believe, will continue to give the courts a basis for fully enforcing congressional subpoenas. So that work would continue. It would be a way to just signal uh, to all the parties who are contemplating defying a subpoena that this is a serious undertaking hmm. in consideration of eventual consideration of removing the president from office. Um, but the kind of day-to-day -day work of the yeah. committee would remain unchanged. We would continue to bring witnesses before the committee so the American yeah. people know the full facts of what happened so they can make their own judgments. And whatever you call it, the White House likely would continue to block your access to witnesses. Congressman Jonathan Lemire has a question for you. John? Sure. Mm -hmm. Congressman, with the White House blocking McGahn from uh, appearing today, is just the latest in a series of, of moves of their open defiance of what Congress can do in your investigative powers. Uh, what can be done about that? Setting aside impeachment, but for the witnesses themselves, just talk of perhaps holding McGahn in, in, in contempt but but the White House has to this point sort of laughed that off. What sort of teeth can you provide to these penalties? Is, there, is, it, is it fines? Is it further punishment? Is it, there was talk last week of even moving towards criminal proceedings. 
Yeah, I mean, it's very important to recognize that the executive branch is allowed to decide what witnesses will comply with congressional subpoenas and what documents they will produce. They can effectively eviscerate congressional oversight. So it's clearly not up to, to the executive branch to make those determinations. We have to go through a process where we'll, we'll find them in contempt, we'll authorize a civil action for enforcement of that, and litigate it in court with the possibility of fines uh, and a forced compliance with the subpoena. But you're right. What we should recognize is this is not about one witness or one president. This is about vindicating the rule of law in this country, about, about protecting the Constitution, not just for this president, but for all future presidents who are watching this. So Congress has a responsibility not only to follow the facts where they lead us and to gather the evidence on behalf of the American people, but to understand the decisions we make today will affect generations in the future and presidents in the future. And it simply cannot be the case that the executive branch, the president of the United States, can direct direct individuals to defy lawful subpoenas issued by the Congress of the United States. The American people won't tolerate it. They expect us to engage in oversight. As Mike said earlier, they may not be following this day to day. They're focused on their own lives. What, are, what is Congress doing to improve my family's life? And they're right to focus on that. And we have to deliver on that. And we are. At the same time, they expect us yeah. to do our job and do robust oversight and hold this administration accountable. All right, Congressman David Cicilline of Rhode Island, who also sits on the House Judiciary Committee, I'm sure we'll be talking to you a lot more. Congressman, thanks for your time. My pleasure. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.